I'm Laura Yates. I work with wood. I love wood. I think it's, it's warm. It feels good to touch. People really respond to wood. When I get an inspiration, if I see a piece of wood that jumps out at me and I'm really inspired and I want to just tackle it and chainsaw it and shape it and carve it in that moment, that's, that's a good moment. It's the inspiration and actually carrying it out. As an artist, I would describe myself as constantly evolving. I started with cabinets and furniture and really rigid designs. Now I work all from my inspiration and make whatever I want. What inspires me is beauty and simplicity. I like to make things that are functional as well as beautiful and simple and pure. I worked as a city planner for about eight years. The idea of influencing how the city can evolve and change is pretty profound. I, I love that idea of making a difference in people's experience of a place. I might have made a difference in protecting some historic buildings, saving some wetlands from industrial development, um, putting some landscaping in on a parking strip, <laughs> things like that. But not the idea that, not making a difference in the way that I thought I could. I was on a soul-searching road trip with one of my best high school friends and we were driving up the coast in Northern California through the Redwoods and my friend Molly says to me um, you know as we were reflecting on our unhappy careers if you could do anything what would you do and I out of nowhere I said that I wanted to make furniture and work with wood I, I don't know where that came from it really it just came from <laughs> somewhere it was just sort of one of those auspicious, cosmic, life-changing moments. Everyone said, don't quit your day job, and I quit my day job, and I don't regret it. <laughs> when I was making furniture and I would design something, I'd go to the lumber yard and buy wood, buy lumber. And there was always a disconnection for me about that because I didn't know where the wood came from. Some of it came from rainforests and other countries, so it, I always had a problem with that. And so I made a conscious choice to, to use local wood, and Urban Hardwoods uses local wood. Jim Newsom of Urban Hardwoods has been one of my best supporters of my work. I proposed to set up a studio at his log yard where I could just use all of the, the stuff that he wasn't going to use. Come on, Pop. Let's go. So the first cut off of a log from the sawmill is called the jacket board. It's, it's unusable for furniture or slabs, so that's what I usually get to make my bowls. I've been collecting jacket boards for a long time. I'll mark out where the best place to get a bowl or a platter or something that I can shape. I'll mark that out and then I'll take my chainsaw and, and roughly shape it with the chainsaw. There's a lot of hard work with what I do, a lot of heavy lifting and a lot of physical exertion and I get a lot out of that, a lot out of the physical work. It beats sitting in front of a computer. I used to sit in a cubicle, so this is, this is great to work outside and 
and I, I guess I like to see the fruits of my labor. I, there, you know, there's something so pleasurable about creating and making and seeing the results of all that work. I never know really what the shape will be until I start peeling layers off. Um, every time I take a little bit off, more is revealed and more is information for me to decide what to do next. So I never know um, what something's going to look like when I, when I first get that chunk of raw wood. I struggle with perfectionism. The bowls have been a big uh, learning curve for me on letting go of a lot of the perfectionism. The wood does what it does. It moves and warps and cracks and splits. There's no, no longer perfection. I've learned to like that better, the imperfections, what nature has turned back. I was living in the Central District and the city came in and did a street improvement, an intersection improvement project at 20th and Union. What they left was a sea of uninterrupted paving. It was just hideous. <laughs> I couldn't resist it. I, I put together a set of furniture, a table and four chairs, and plunked it right there on the street corner. And that was five years ago, and it's still there. <laughs> I do those unsanctioned projects because I can, because I can't, <laughs> I can't help myself. I want, I want there to be cool street furniture, and I know from years of working in bureaucracy, what it would take to do it legally, and it would not be as cool. With urban planning, I had an idealistic view of, of changing people's experience of place. And the reality is that I, I don't have that ability, but my passion for you know, bringing beauty into the world is still there. It's always been there. So I've found a way to do that now that works by making a piece of artwork or a piece of furniture and bringing that beauty and quality into this world. It makes a difference in people's homes, it makes a difference in people's lives because it I see the joy that they that they get when they when they hold one of my pieces. And that's really significant to me. This Madrona. Oh my god, that's awesome. Live Edge. Wow. Oh. That is amazing. I want people to, to just get it, if that makes sense. Um, I'm making, well, with the bowls, I'm making a simple utilitarian and universally understandable form. When I, when I nail it, when I get the, sh the form right and the shape right and the color right and the, everything all comes together and I see it and someone else sees it and they appreciate that, that, that I like. I don't have any favorite all-time pieces of my work, but sometimes I fall in love with something I've made for a long time, and it's hard for me to let it go. Um, but then I, then I make something new that I love, and then that sort of takes its place. So I'm always falling in love all the time. 